From director Andre Overdahl and producer Guillermo del Toro comes Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This is a fairly new movie. It, it came out last year, but of course it is based on the Timeless short story collection series of the same name by Alvin Schwartz. Now, those books, the the scary stories to tell in the dark book series, uh, those uh, I, I remember, as I'm, I'm sure many do, from my childhood, they were definitely these coveted books, and everyone kind of had to to get a crack at them and, and, and read them, and, and uh, uh, while I don't... I don't remember perfectly all of the stories, only really a vague memory. What's always kind of stuck in my memory and and vividly stayed with me have, has been the uh, the illustrations that came with them, which were so great. I mean, so horrific and, and ghastly, so much so that you kind of, you know, you look at them and you're like, should, should kids really be <laughs> reading this material? Uh, stuff like that so it's it, it's fitting that the the film it is in kind of that same spirit where this is intended for a younger audience but it really kind of pushes the envelope quite a bit in showing kind of terrifying imagery and and all the horrific kind of stuff that is, is, is pretty firmly associated with that book series and I remember there there being a fair amount of excitement for this movie you know it's it's kind of this this nostalgic thing and an opportunity to introduce to new audiences I don't think I really I don't remember seeing any trailers for it though it kind of eluded me entirely um, but uh, I did recently watch it and going into it I don't know, for, for whatever reason, I was kind of anticipating it to be an anthology film, you know, where it shows, you know, a little series of, of vignettes and stuff like that to the tune of, you know, like Creepshow or Tales from the Dark Side or, you know, so, something like that, basically. But I was wrong, and, you know, I, I figured this out, <laughs> like, you know, getting 15 minutes into the movie, I'm like, I don't think they're really kind of doing that I guess huh uh, so I don't know I got a little bit confused and then it, it all kind of uh, comes together and I'll say that I mean the movie definitely it takes its time within the first 15 20 minutes or so uh, where it, it kind of reserves itself a little bit too I don't know, uh, establish its characters, get you kind of at least uh, a decently uh, amount of investment in them and kind of get exposition out of the way as, as kind of carefully as it possibly can. Um, but what it amounts to is, is that it is a group of kids. They, they go into an old haunted house in, in, in this city all these small towns seem to have one right and uh the the kind of story is that there there is this uh young woman who uh killed herself and her ghost tells these kids stories through the wall and and then they disappear and kind of stuff like that uh they take the book or, or one girl in particular uh the the heroine of the film stella and she's played by Zoe Margaret Coletti is, is the actress playing her. Uh, she takes the book, and what happens is stories, they kind of just start to appear in this book. And it's, it's supposedly written in, in blood, in children's blood. And it's, it's, it's manifesting before her eyes. And what's happening is these stories are coming to life through people that she knows through, I suppose, everyone who, who entered the house that night. Um, and and, and the, they disappear, and, and it's, you know, it becomes this whole kind of mystery. And I, I do think that, you know, that's kind of a clever way to uh, bring all these stories together. I mean, again, I don't have an exact memory of, of all of the stories, but I would imagine that these are, you know, hand-selected stories from 
from the the series that have been worked in, into this film. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of a clever idea. It's, it's something a little bit different than just presenting it in this anthology kind of way. So it's it, it's it's pretty clever in in how it weaves the pre-existing story together into this new story. Uh, which is not to say it's it's an entirely original kind of movie and, and all that. I mean, there, there's definitely influence from from horror classics and 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 other kind of visual styles that we've seen before. And even with the group of kids, we we kind of get this sense of it's 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 kind of like what they've done with stuff like you know Super Eight or Stranger Things or it where we have this group of kids and they're sort of the the outcasts of this school they're kind of losers losers club kind of thing uh and they all have their own kind of personal demons in in their home life that they're they're battling with and, and they all have their own little quirks and idiosyncrasies and flaws and and all that uh so i mean it doesn't feel entirely original in that sense, but I mean, it's it's enough that we we general genuinely like the characters. Uh, I would say uh, they're they're developed well. I mean, as well as they can be in a movie like this, and better than some other you know uh, adult oriented horror films. So that's that's a definite plus for the movie, and this is something. I don't know, maybe a, a little bit rare, where, I mean, the the target audience is exactly kind of the, the age of, of the kids that are portrayed in, in this film. So, you know, like 14, 15, 16-year-old kind of kids. So they'll, they'll be able to see this movie with the, the PG-13 rating that it has, and it's quite appropriate that... Uh, this this is for for younger audiences and and the books were for younger readers so it's a good fit and i think at least for the most part it's it captures the spirit of of the books and captures the spirit of of those uh very uh shocking and, and frightening illustrations that we see like there's, there's good moments like there's definitely uh a lot of tension that that builds in, in quite a few scenes and and suspense and some you know some unnerving kind of stuff like there, there's some stuff in this movie where it, it does feel like it's kind of pushing the edge a little bit like you know this this was a cut or two uh from being an r-rated movie i guess um but it, it, it takes that balance pretty pretty well and it's 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 just enough to satisfy i think a horror fan of any age but i i would say that you know it's it is probably more for kids which is fine i mean this isn't on the, on the level of something like it where if you show a kid that movie they're gonna they're gonna say hey it's a kid like me and then be fucking traumatized by all the crazy shit happening in that movie this one it'll certainly be scary but not not as you know over the top, over the edge, uh, very mature as something like like it is. So this is kind of a uh, a good uh, a good set of training wheels, I guess. If if you're trying to inspire the horror fan and in, in uh, uh, your child or, or younger relative or anything like that, so I, I think it, it works in that respect. Because of course, kids love to be scared. They love scary movies. I love the scary, mature stuff when when I was a young kid. So I mean, obviously, it's not gonna traumatized because if they see something you know r-rated but th there's definitely room for something like this and i think it's achieves exactly what it sets out to do and i think it's a good movie for halloween season i mean well for for one thing it actually it does uh, open on halloween so there's this whole kind of setting that they kind of introduce us to where it is actually it's set in the 1970s we get you know whiffs of of the vietnam war and that actually plays an important uh, part of of the plot actually it plays into that um 
later on in the film where there's a revelation about one of the characters and uh, Donovan's season of the witch is playing and 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 we get uh, a sense of this small town and we get the kids and we get you know tried and true patented over the top bullies that you know have have no other mission in life than 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 to to torture these these poor kids and make their lives a living hell and things like that but thankfully they actually don't play those those characters out too much which which is very appreciated actually um because that's been that's kind of a cliche that kind of just gets annoying after a while so i think they they play that just enough just enough so it doesn't get too overbearing right um and all this kind of stuff. Watching Night of the Living Dead in, in the drive-in theater. And the girls' room is full of horror posters from all these classic horror films and all that. So it sets up a, a nice world that's, that's, that's at least in, in, in some ways unique. And, and in other ways, uh, you know, kind of uh, heavily inspired by, by other works. But it's it's a good movie i think it's it's definitely a good uh, viewing choice for halloween uh if if you are someone who kind of fondly remembers those older books i mean it's, it's definitely worth checking this out and maybe sparking that memory a little bit or if, or if you enjoy them and, and know them you know front to back cover to cover uh it's, it's definitely something worth introducing to a younger horror fan in your life or potential horror fan so it's it's a good movie i, I enjoyed it uh well worth being on a, a 31 days of horror movie marathon that's what i'm doing this month 31 days of horror new horror movie reviews every day i'm watching horror movies non-stop this october so i hope you'll stay with me and until next time be sure to comment rate subscribe all that good stuff stay scared and i'll see you later